connecting with the ground. And maybe you feel yourself swaying a little bit side to side, forward and back. That's your body just naturally balancing itself out. We don't usually notice that sway. We just take a moment to use that body sway, that body stance to begin to bring yourself into your practice from your morning. And then bring your attention back to your feet, to your toes, and begin to slowly scan your body up from the ground, checking in with your feet, your ankles, your calf muscles. And as you do that slow scan, just listen to your body. Where does it want to move today? Where does your body want to maybe strengthen and get some energy out today? And just notice if there's anywhere that's hurting that needs a little bit of kindness and compassion in your practice while it heals. Cut that information away. Once you're done that body scan, bring your attention to your breath. And as you inhale, allow your arms to float up from your sides. And as you exhale, let those arms float back down. And I want you to continue to move your arms with the inhale. And the exhale. Letting your breath guide the movement. I almost feel like they're magically floating out beside you. And then begin to deepen that breath, making a little bit longer. Arms will move a little bit more. And exhale that breath nice and slow. Noticing how much movement you can bring in your body with that breath. With your next exhale, you can let those arms rest at your sides. Drop the chin down to your chest. And begin to roll your left ear towards your left shoulder, letting your left arm stay nice and heavy. And maybe you also want to think about reaching that right arm down to the ground, just increasing that neck stretch a little bit, checking in with how it feels today. And then slowly begin to bring your chin up toward the ceiling. So you're slightly moving your neck, changing the stretch. And then on your exhale, bring that chin back to forward. Rolling your chin across the front of your chest and bringing right ear to right shoulder. Allowing that right shoulder, right hand to be heavy and reach toward the ground. And then think about the left fingers reaching toward the ground to increase that stretch. Perhaps being curious as to the difference between the sides of your neck. Maybe one's a little bit more open than the other. And then slowly begin to move your chin toward the ceiling, just switching the perspective of that stretch a little bit. Bring your chin back to face forward. Rolling the chin across the chest. Pausing here, opening the back of the neck. And maybe you want to take those hands, reach them behind your back and interlace those fingers. Pulling your arms down toward the floor and away from the bed. So you're stretching those arms, waking them up. Still stretching the back of the neck. And then on an exhale, release those hands. And begin to sweep those hands forward and up as you raise the head to face forward. And you can allow those eyes to open. 
And I want you to think about really reaching with your ring fingers, nice and long fingers, and then also pushing down with your feet. So feeling the pressure of the feet into the ground, and then feel the length come from reaching those ring fingers high. Let's take your right hand, grab your left wrist, and then slowly side bend over to the right side. Option to stay here, or you can take your left foot and step it behind your right, bending that right knee, left leg, the back leg is straight. That just adds to your side body stretch. And I'm seeing if you can find your breath. Keeping it nice and long, smooth. If it's becoming ragged, come out of the pose a little bit. Step your foot back to center. Use that core, reach up high. Then let's take left hand, grab right wrist. Inhale, reach. Exhale, side bend. Finding stability in your side bend. And then if it feels good, take your right foot, step it behind the left. Front knee bends, back leg straighten. Just notice, whew, as they rock out there, <laughs> how that can change your side bend. Inhaling deep. Exhaling long. Stepping the feet out. Bring yourself out of the side bend, reaching high. And let's bring those arms down along our sides. Taking a moment of rest. Walk your feet out, perhaps wider than your mat. Toes out, heels in. We're gonna inhale those arms up nice and high. Flip the palms away from each other and sweep those arms down behind you, full circle. Grabbing those fingers again, bending the knees, and let's forward fold, hinging at the hips, coming down with those hands behind the back. Once you can't forward fold anymore, think about move, keep moving those arms away from the back body. It might just be a millimeter, but that energy is moving away. And you can notice my legs are still really bent because I'm focusing on my back and my shoulders, not my legs in this movement. And on your exhale, release your arms down, keep the legs bent. Let's plant the left hand in front of us in the center, making a little triangle. We're gonna bend the left knee, right leg straightens, and we're gonna twist open with that right arm to the side. So your left leg is bent, Left arm is pushing into the ground, and then you're reaching up and open, twisting to the side body. Inhaling deep, exhaling long. And as you exhale, it's coming back down to center, bend both those knees. Switch the hands, plant the right hand in the center. Sweep up with the left hand as you straighten the left leg, bend the right knee. Gaze can reach the side or up. Feel that breath moving in and out. And then exhale, sweep down, bend both knees, almost coming through a squat. Planting the left hand, sweeping up with the right to the other side one more time. One leg's bent, one leg straight. Then exhale, sweep down, switch the hand. Switch the leg position and reach up. Introductory twist, so understand that the twist at the beginning of the class is not going to be as deep as the twist at the end of the class. So we're not warm yet, we're just getting there. Now let's bring the, both those hands down, bending the knees. We're going to bring those hands in a little bit closer, spreading the fingers. Really pressing the ground as we step back one knee into our tabletop. And then the second knee into the tabletop. Maybe resetting a little bit. And then we're gonna drop the belly down, raise the sit bones, and then bring the chest through the shoulders, gaze comes up, embrace your inner cow, feel a little silly. Also feel that arch in the back. And then exhale, push the ground away, 
Begin to arch the back just like that black Halloween cat, bringing it all the way up, belly button to spine, heart into chest, and then relax your head and neck. Embrace that cat. As you exhale, begin to drop the belly back down, raise the sit bones nice and high, bringing the chest through, gaze up. Nice, slow spinal movement here. And then exhale, switching over to the cat. Belly button to chest, or to spine, heart to chest, embrace your cat. We're just releasing that back, we're gonna do one more from all that sitting from this morning. At the computer, embracing Zoom or your textbooks. We're just gonna move this spine a little bit, wake it up. One more cat, and coming back to tabletop. You can tuck those toes, spread those fingers, really feel the hands anchor in. Begin to push the front of the mat away as you move back, rolling into down dog. In your first down dog, you can really bend those knees. And then think about pressing the hands into the ground and the feet coming down into the ground. Heels don't have to touch, just think about downward energy. Weight the hands and feet. Maybe you want to bend one knee and then the other in your first damn dog of the day. Walking out those legs. Maybe you're noticing if you want to stay a little bit longer in one of those positions, just embrace that. Or if you want a little bit quicker movement, then you can try that out as well. And part of our yoga practice is learning to hear what your body needs. We're going to inhale, look forward, keep those hips high, let's baby step the feet to the front of the mat. Bend the knees, forward fold, really bend them to start. And then think about lifting the hips up high. So if we're not thinking about bending the knees and straightening the knees, we're thinking about the hips. So if you've lost it there, bend the knees a lot again. Really let the head hang, neck hang. And then think about lifting the hips as your torso drops down. Feel those feet really connect into the ground, really spread out, taking up space. And then use the energy from the feet as they push into the ground to slowly roll on up to a standing position. Nice and tall, maybe rolling those shoulders back. Standing tall, feeling the neck and head reach toward the sky. Inhale, sweep those arms forward and up. Gaze comes up. Exhale, bend the knees, hinge the hips, let's forward fold all the way down. Inhale, hands come to shins. Reach in the spine long, find your half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep those arms out as you push up all the way to standing. Exhale, hands through heart center. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep those arms, come to standing. Exhale, hands through heart center. Just like last week. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. This time, bend the knees, plant the hands. Let's step back with the right foot nice and long to a lunge. You can tend the fingers so you can stay up high, really pushing the toes into the ground, lifting your chest. And just take a few minutes of moments of lowering the knee, it doesn't have to go all the way, and bringing the knee up. 
Just noticing what that wants to stretch on the front of the leg and the glutes a little bit there too. Maybe you inhale one movement, exhale the other movement if you want to stick with the rhythm of the breath. And then drop that back knee and maybe untap the toes. And let's move the sit bones back. The front of the knee is not going to straighten all the way. But just notice how if you move forward and back with that front knee. Move my arm there so you can see. How you just move until you feel a little sensation, a good stretch. And just adding a little bit of movement today. It's been a long seated morning. And then coming forward, bending the leg, planting the hands on the ground again, tucking the back toes. Really push the hands into the ground and let's step back to plank from the knees or the toes, yogi's choice. Whichever way you're taking plank, I want you to push the ground away. Think hard into chest, belly bent to spine. Be strong here. And slowly lower all the way to the ground, to the belly. Reach those arms out front, elbows under shoulders, forms on the ground as you come up into Sphinx. Over and you can widen the feet here. And today in Sphinx, I want you to really think about pushing not only your hands into the ground, but your forearms into the ground. And think about gripping your fingertips and pulling your chest through. Nice active Sphinx. Pushing down through the forearms and the hands, gripping with the fingertips, and pulling that chest forward. Remembering to check in with the breath. Exhale all the way down. Bring the hands beside the chest. Feel the knees press into the ground, tuck the toes, get ready to be strong. Let's push on all the way up to plank on the knees. And then we'll slowly come back to down dog. Today we're thinking about the hands pushing down, the feet anchoring down. Inhale, look forward. And now I've got to remember which side we're on. Oh, I believe it's the right foot forward. Whew, it is. <laughs> and then tent those fingers, chest goes up, and let's slowly lower the back knee, lifting the back knee up. Hardest part of being a yoga teacher, guys, is still on my right and my left, remembering which one I've done. But for you, just embrace the front of the leg on the other side. And just use these little knee dips to see what is tight, what is loose. Maybe your body wants to stay in one of these positions a little bit longer. So give it the freedom to do that. Then draw the back knee slowly. Untuck the toes and let's move the sit bones back, extending the front leg. Does not have to move anywhere close to straight. You're just noticing that movement now on the back of the front leg. Can you feel that little stretch? Adjust and move around. And just noticing with your body, does it want to stay in a position? Or does it want a little bit faster movement today? And then coming into that bent leg in the front, planting the hands on the ground, tucking the back toe, feeling the knee, and however you can, stepping back to plank on the knees or on the toes, yogi's choice. Really think heart into chest, belly button into spine, push the ground away. Nice strong plank, you guys got this. And then exhale, coming all the way down to the belly. Coming back to sphinx, elbows under shoulders, forearms out, spreading those fingers wide and think of actively pressing the hands into the ground, the forearms into the ground. Feel those fingers grip as you pull your shoulders through or your chest through. 
Basically, what we're trying to do with this motion is actively extend the spine and the neck and the head. Because we do not do this when we're sitting there at the computer. So we're trying to just embrace this opposite movement, but in a really active way. You guys got this. Check in with your breath. Inhale deep. Exhale long. Coming all the way down. Hands by the chest, tuck the toes, feel the knees and get ready to push on back up to plank. And then coming back to down dog. Finding your stance, spreading the fingers. And you have the option here to stay in down dog for five to seven breaths. Or if you wanna drop those knees wide, bring the feet together. You can also come into a child's pose. So once again, you're asking your body, what does it want? Does it want the activity and the strength of down dog? Does it want more of the back traction and stretch, relaxation and child's pose? Finding what it needs. Maybe experimenting to see what it feels like today. And just learning to trust yourself that you know what your body needs best. So wherever you are, we're gonna meet back into down dog. So if you're in child's pose, meet us here. Looking at those feet, bending the knees, you're gonna slowly walk those hands back toward the feet. Coming to a forward fold. And we're gonna heel toe those feet wide again. Toes off the mat, heels on the mat. Left hand plants in the center like a triangle. We're gonna come back into that twist. Right arm comes up that we did at the beginning of class. Just think if you can make it a little bit more open this time. And then exhale, come down, switch the hands. Bend one knee straight and the other way to open the other way. Just observing how it's changed since the beginning of class. One more time to each side. Embracing this twist one more time. The back of the mat, we've switched our place a little bit. So one more on each side. Noticing how our body's getting much more open. Exhale, coming all the way down. Bending the knees out over the toes into our bent leg forward fold. Reaching those hands behind you and away from the body. And think about lifting the hips as you come into this wide leg forward fold with the arms behind you. And that can be a little scary sometimes not having the arms to catch you if you fall. But know that you can always release those hands. That feels more safer to you. And then I want you to bend the knees again, coming down into that squat, release the hands. Bring them to your thighs. And think about hinging the hips as you come on up. Knees are still bent, but your back is straight as you come on up into a sitting squat. Bring those arms in front of you, reaching long. You might feel those thighs a little bit. And then push your feet into the ground as you push all the way up to standing. Arms can come by your side. You can heel toe those feet together. Standing tall at the back of your mat. Maybe you want to walk to the middle just for some room. Walk those feet apart, hip width apart. Close your eyes again. Feel ourselves standing tall, come back to that sway. And now I want you to lean your weight into your heels. Keep your eyes closed. Notice where your feet want to grip and where they want to lift. Keeping your eyes closed, slowly shift the weight through your feet to the ball, the front of your foot. Maybe as a challenge with those eyes closed, you want to come up on the tiptoes. <laughs> Maybe get a little bit. Balance is interesting with eyes closed. And then slowly lower those heels down. Shifting the weight over to the right. So feet 
stay flat, but you're leaning, just like leaning to our Pisa. But observe how your feet change as you lean. Let's lean over to the left. Notice that weight shifting. Then begin to make a circle. So maybe move the weight back to the heels, over to the side. Into the balls of the feet, and over to the other side. And just notice when your feet want to grip, when they want to release. And let's do the circle the other way. Our feet are so significant to our daily life and we don't usually listen to them. But as we get close to icy season and we want to be able to react and grip the ground, it's nice to give our feet a little bit of attention. So coming into center now, take a moment to lift the toes, set them down. See if you can feel your big toe mound, your pinky toe mound and your heel all equally connect with the ground. Opening the eyes, shifting the weight into your left foot and bringing your right leg up, bending the knee, flexing the foot, making a little square there. Hand on the right knee, left hand on the hip. You can stay here. You can also hold onto a wall or a chair, embrace the balance. Perhaps you want to open the knee to the side. If you wobble, get back in. Perhaps you want to let go of the hip, reaching the arm out, thumb comes up. And then challenge yourself to look at your thumb and notice how much of your balance comes from your vision. If you wobble, smile, try and get back. We're practicing our balance today. Every time we practice, no matter how many times we wobble, we're getting better. And then slowly move in reverse, bring the gaze back to center, hand to the hip. Bring the knee in. And then for fun today, I'm gonna change my orientation. If you need a little break, set your foot down. But if you want to, you can begin to lean forward, kicking that foot back. We're gonna come into airplane. Whew. If you have the room, the arms can be fully up to the side. If you don't have the room like me, you can try cactus. We're not going to stay here long, so we've been on this foot already a long time. So bend the knee in, try and stand up. See if you can do it. Knee up, set the foot down, and then wiggle out those legs. Maybe jump up and down a little bit. That was a really long balance today. Your foot might be a little sore, but that means it's getting stronger. And the nice thing about yoga and staying symmetrical is we get to try it again on the other side. So standing tall, then roll those shoulders, close your eyes, check in with the feet. Maybe lift those toes, set them down. And then slowly move into the right leg, left leg comes up. So bend the left knee, flex the foot, that helps with balance. Right hand on the hip, left hand on the knee. Option to stay here. Or option to move out the right arm nice and long, thumb up. Move the leg open to the side. Option to look over at that thumb. Woo! Enjoy that balance wobble. Give me a smile a bit. We can probably all use a little bit more smile in our day. Woo! And then slowly reverse it all. Gaze comes back to center. Hand comes back to hip. Knee comes in and you have an option to take a break here by putting your leg down or slowly bending forward, shooting the leg back and embracing your airplane, your warrior three, your inner figure skater, whatever you're thinking here. You're flexing that back foot and keeping it in the air. Having fun with the balance. If that foot is touching down, just see if you can bring it back up if the hands are touching down. This is a nice variation here. And then having fun, let's bring that knee into the chest as you straighten back up. I'm using the wall here. <laughs> Bringing the knee up, setting the leg down. And let's shake that all out. Whew. 
Good job, everybody. All right, move into the front of the mat. Moving our way around here. We're gonna bring those legs wide one more time. Toes to the side, heels in. Inhale, reach those arms up. Hands together. And exhale, we're gonna slowly squat down. Knees out to the sides. Hands come down to the chest as you lower. You can stay nice and high in a more active squat, pushing the ground away. If you choose a yogi squat, you can release those hips, but still actively push your feet into the ground. Checking in with the breath. Inhaling deep. Exhaling long. Let's bring the hands to the floor. Bring our butts to the floor as we sit down. We're gonna bring the legs in front of us, feet together, hands behind us. We're gonna sit nice and tall, proud chest, wide collarbone, belly button to spine. So right here, this is a lot of work for the back, a lot of work for extending the back and the chest. So you can stay here, or you can begin to lean back a little bit so that your feet wanna pop off the ground. Still having a nice long spine. Option to release one arm and then the other into your floating boat. <laughs> Reaching that spine long. And if you have shoes, you can extend those legs. So if you extend and you find that you're arching, then I want you to come back to bent legs. That's a flexibility thing. We're working some core and some balance here. You guys got it. Connect with that breath. I know somebody that can even apple in this position, which I think is interesting in itself. <laughs> and then exhale, release. Walk those feet as wide as the mat. Hands behind you, spreading the fingers. Fingers toward toes. Feel your feet and hands really connect to the ground. Push into the ground, slightly raise your sit bones. And then squeeze your glutes to help lift your hips up into a reverse tabletop. So depending on your body, I really feel this in my arms, they're my tightest place. Some people feel this a lot in their glutes or their hips. So just check in, send the breath to your place that needs the support. Then exhale, come all the way down. Ooh. Beautiful. And then slowly keep lowering onto the forearms. Coming all the way onto the back. We're gonna walk those heels in closer to your sit bones. And so if you look at your legs, it's wide enough that you could put an orange there maybe or a yoga block, like you keep holding them there so there's a little bit of space. Your arms are long down your body, palms pressing into the ground. You want to lift your head, reach your head back, and set your head back down so you have a nice long spine on the mat. You're going to inhale deep. And as you exhale, you can push your feet into the floor and begin to lift your sit bones and your lower back, and your mid back, and your upper back off the ground into a bridge. Keep your gaze on the ceiling and keep trying to lift those hips using your feet and your glute muscles to help them stay up. Connect with that breath. And then as you lower, I want you to think about your middle back lowering first, then your low back, and then your butt. And then you come all the way down, taking a break here, finding your breath. And if you'd like to do one more, you could do it exactly like that with the arms alongside the side, the body helping you push out. If you'd like to try a different variation, you can lift the arms above your head, reaching them behind you nice and long. Feel those feet get ready to lift. So inhale deep. And as you exhale, begin to lift your butt, your low back, your mid back, off the ground. 
just observing how it feels different with your arms over your head. But still really using your feet to push into the ground and your glutes to help lift those hips. Finding your breath. And then exhale, slowly lowering mid-back, low back, glute muscles all the way down, taking a little bit of a break. And then we're going to sweep those arms back down alongside the body. One more back bend. Option this time to keep the arms alongside your body or to walk them underneath. So inhale deep, exhale, begin to peel that back off the ground nice and slow. And you can leave those arms long or maybe you want to walk those arms under the body so that you can interlace the fingers and then push the arms into the ground. That can help you raise your chest a little bit. Always checking in that if you're in any kind of sharpshooting pain that you are coming out of this, moving back a step. You want to stay in the yellow zone. Nice, safe movement. You can release the arms and slowly lower the back. Mid-back, low back, and back. Ooh. Bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. We're just going to let gravity help us release those legs a little bit. An option to bring your hands to your belly. I want you to visualize in your head your favorite color of balloon or color combination of balloon. You can get some pretty fancy ones. And then with your breath, I want you to inhale long and deep, blowing up the balloon in your belly. So feel your belly rise, just like that balloon grow. Pause for a minute at the top, admire the color. And exhale, slowly let the balloon deflate. Allow your belly to fall. Inhale, feel your belly and that balloon grow big. Pause the top to admire the color. And slowly exhale, watching the balloon deflate. Do a few more of those belly breaths to your own speed. As we begin to transition into the more chill part of the class, some of the longer stretches. And as you're feeling this balloon breath move, know that gravity is helping you with this cobbler stretch. You don't have to force your legs out or down. Gravity and time are your workout buddies and they're doing the work for you here. When you finish your next balloon breath, you can bring those hands out to the legs and slowly bring your legs together. And you can bring both knees into your chest. And then bring your feet up toward the ceiling. And they may not reach completely toward the ceiling. You can see mine are more in a diagonal. But your knees are bent into your chest. And then your legs are kind of opened up, hinged open as far as they can go. I want you to think about bringing your heels together and your knees out wide opening the hips and then reaching your hands up I want you to curl up and either grab the shin the ankle or the top of the foot you come into happy baby and then slowly think about pulling your legs down so your knees come closer to the ground and you're going to roll back down to the ground so if you're like oh I re reached too high the first time just curl it up then maybe grab a spot lower on your legs and then slowly come back down. And maybe you do want to rock a little bit side to side. This pose can feel a little silly. So you're totally entitled to be silly. Some people can feel a little scary. 
Just notice how you feel today in this pose. Maybe using your deep inhale, your long exhale to help you get heavy on the mat. And then slowly you're gonna release your legs, bring those legs together into your chest, into that little bubble. And you're gonna bring your right knee into your chest, hands around the shin, and your left foot is gonna to touch the mat. Knee stays bent. Settling here with that breath. And then you're gonna take this right knee, it's gonna come out to the side, just like it did when we were standing. And that foot's gonna cross on top of the left knee into a bigger four. Really pushing the right leg away from your body. And if you feel a stretch here, I want you to stay. Enjoy that stretch. And if you have room to grow, you can curl up your spine and head, reach one hand through the middle and one around the outside and wrap your fingers around the thigh, coming into reverse pigeon and then come back down to the middle. Both these poses, figure four and reverse pigeon, stretch the same muscles glutes and the thighs. So finding the one that keeps you in your yellow zone, where you feel the stretch in that nice, sweet way. Maybe check in that your shoulders and your head can rest on the mat. And see if you can do a little bit less work in the rest of your body. Maybe those fingers can loosen your back and head can just rest on the mat. So where you feel this pose is really around the hip, the glute, the back of the leg. And then slowly release those hands, planting the left foot on the ground, uncrossing the right leg, planting it on the ground. And then let's bring the left knee into the chest. Wrapping those arms around the shin, giving a little extra support. And then you can sweep the left knee out to the side, left foot goes on top of the knee, finding your figure four. Taking a moment to pause here, check on in. If you're feeling pain in the knee, feeling free to experiment with, do you want more of your shin on your leg or more of your foot? If you feel the stretch here, enjoy the stretch and stay here. If you have room to grow, you can curl up and reach those arms around the leg, coming back onto the mat. Wherever you are, figure four, reverse pigeon. Just want you to see if you can do a little bit less work with the arms and the neck and the head so that you feel this work in the back of the leg, in the butt, in the hip. Let the work be there. So if you're really feeling your neck contorted as you try and stay here, just back off the pose a little bit. Maybe bringing the foot down, coming back to figure four. So that you can relax the neck. Just feel the movement and the stretch in the leg. I think one of the hardest things as we advance into our yoga practice is learning to embrace that yoga is about sensation. It's about feeling the work in your body. It's not about what it looks like, regardless of what social media says. <laughs> How it makes us healthier is by being able to recognize the work that our body is doing and feel when that work is in a good place, as opposed to a place that could injure us if we're trying to make it look a certain way. So I challenge you all to embrace the feeling of sensation, the feeling of stretch, 
the feeling of muscle work, of engagement. And just trust that you know when something feels good and when it doesn't feel good. Because our end goal is to be healthy, to increase our health span. That's why we practice. And you can unfold that leg, bring it back down. We're going to reach both arms out to the side in cactus arms. Bring your knees into your chest. And then slowly let those legs fall over to the left side. Gaze can fall over the right arm. Maybe just observe how this twist feels different than the other ones we did in class. Now that we're coming to the end of our practice. Then bring the gaze back to center, knees to center. And then let those knees fall over to the right side. Gaze over the left. Just allow your body to settle into a restful twist. Find that nice, sweet, Stretch. Then bring your gaze back to center and knees to center. Bring the feet to the ground and walk those legs long on your mat, heels to the corner. Bring those arms along your sides, back to the palms to the ground. You reach that neck out long, resting the head on the ground. We've done a lot of movement here today. We're just gonna end with a few body tension and release moves just so we can begin to recognize this difference between tension and relaxation. So as you inhale, I want you to clench your fists, point your toes, clench all your muscles. Maybe they come off, off the mat. And then exhale, release everything down. Open those hands, release the pointed toes and melt into your mat. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, clenching all of your muscles really tight. Maybe you're shaking your clenching so much. And then exhale, release. Melting into the ground. And for a few moments, I just want you to feel the mat to the ground beneath you. just maybe bring that attention back down to the toes and slowly move up your body checking in and seeing how today's practice created change in your body how it may have created change in the pace of your thoughts And just be curious about the difference between the opening scan and this ending scan. We're gonna reach those arms up overhead. Planting one foot on the ground, then the other, rolling over to our left-hand side. I'm just taking a quick moment here to think of one thing we're grateful for today. Planting the top hand into the ground. Slowly push ourselves up to a nice, comfortable seat. Hands to heart center. And we'll end with a deep inhale through the nose. Long exhale through the mouth. Letting every bit of that practice go. Thank you so much for joining me this Thursday lunch hour. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and we'll see you next time.